My friends, we have to have a serious talk about you, your ex, and social media, and why you cannot stop stalking their social media. I've said many times on the channel, I say it to my one-to-one -one clients, I say it to friends, I say it to the guys in my Facebook group, this must stop, because if it does not, you will not heal and you will not get better, and your ex wins, they will live rent-free in your head. Now, you constantly going onto social media, and maybe you're not even looking at your ex's profile, maybe you're looking at their families, maybe you're looking at their friends, and someone recently told me that they uh, are looking at the new partner constantly, and that's come up more than once, it isn't just one person, it's come up multiple times, it comes up in almost every coaching session I do, it comes up almost daily, and every time you do this, you tear open the wound just a little bit more, and it takes just a little bit longer to get better. So for me, every time you look on social media at your ex, you just bought yourself another six weeks of healing. Now, social media, doing this on social media is like having an, an ulcer in your mouth. It will get better if only you would stop tonguing it. And that's kind of what's happening with the social media thing. And right now you might be asking, Nick, why is this such a big mistake? Well, the reason it's a big mistake is because you are focused on the breakup. You are focused on your ex. You're not focused on yourself. And if you're not focused on yourself, if your ambition is to get them back, they won't ever come back if you're not focused on yourself because you're not getting you back. And if you're not getting you back, if you're not focused on you and your ex does come back, who will they find? The person they dumped, the person they do not want to be with, the person they lost emotional attraction for, or Will they find the person that did the work and leveled up? Now, the people who do the work and level up do not have time for social media. They do not have time to be stalking their ex on social media. And this comes back to why breakups are so much harder in this day and age is because we have so much access to information. Back in the day, and I'm going to sound like a granddad now, I'm only 39, but I remember a time where you would just take the phone off the hook and you just wouldn't go to that person's house and that was it. That's how you would deal with a breakup. It still sucked, but you had no information about that person. Now, you may feel that having information about that person is helping you because your anxiety, or rather your need for information is causing you anxiety and your anxiety is leading you to go onto social media. But when the medicine becomes the disease, we have to change the medicine. And all your need for information is doing is just, you're, it's just replaying this story that you've told yourself about the breakup and about them and about what they're doing on social media. Now, here's the thing about social media and what you see on social media. It is all bullshit. Social media creates an illusion of competition, happiness, moving on. If your ex is posting 10 pictures a day or they have a picture of them and their new partner up there, or the rebound or the monkey branch, and it says, in a serious relationship, please know it's all bullshit. Because happy people, genuinely happy people, do not need to tell the world what is going on in their lives because they're too busy being happy. They're too busy focusing on themselves. They don't require external validation. Just because your ex is already dating someone new does not mean, please guys, do not ever think this, it does not mean they have moved on, it means they've taken an emotional painkiller, now, don't get me wrong, there are exceptions to every rule, some people may have moved on, because maybe they checked out months or even years before your breakup actually happened, because your breakup is the last event in a series of events that led up to that breakup, okay, so I want you to take it from me, the best thing I did when I was going through my breakup, and we're talking three years ago now, the best thing, I came, I came off of social media for a good few months. And what I mean by that, I mean all versions of it. Apart from, some people call YouTube 
um, social media. I don't typically agree on that. Social media for me is Facebook, is Instagram, is where you, 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 you're you interacting with your friends and family and people, you know, influencers and that kind of thing. And I guess you can say that about YouTube, but I was using that for educational purposes and I was using it to create this channel. But I deleted all my apps and the first couple of weeks were hard. I'm not going to lie. It was habit. It was an addiction. It's a dopamine filled addiction. And our dopamine mechanisms are not designed to have that much dopamine. And after two weeks, I felt great. I, I come off it for like two, almost two months and I felt amazing. And I, I, I got so much done. I focused on me. I'm not saying I didn't think about my ex. I'm not saying I, I didn't still love my ex at the time. I'm not saying that I, I didn't miss my ex. I did. I'm not saying I didn't hurt. I did. But if somebody's offering you offering you a solution where, hey, look, this is going to make make you feel 40 to 50 percent better. Will you take that? Will you take that? Most people will say yes. So, guys, you have got to you have got to say no, because by saying no, you're actually saying yes to other opportunities, because me saying no to logging onto my phone and going onto social media meant I was saying yes to meditation, meant I was saying yes to the gym, it meant I was saying yes to journaling, it meant I was saying yes to going and doing new hobbies or meeting new friends or going on a date, it meant I was saying yes to not sitting there rather I was saying no to not sitting there feeling sorry for myself I was saying yes to get up and do something productive okay now when I coach my one-to-one clients and I suggest this a lot of the time it's like I'm asking them to chop an arm off because we're, we're so interdependent with social media and I get that it's part of life I'm not saying you should never ever go on social media I use it for business so I can't say I can't sit here and say that I don't use social media I do I'd be very hypocritical of me if I said, hey, don't ever use social media. No, I'm not saying that. It has its benefits. But in the context of a breakup, it has zero benefits. And I mean zero, okay? Because all social media does, it reminds you of the events that you are not invited to and it makes you hyper aware of everybody else's fake highlight real bullshit. That's where we are. So if you want to get better, if you want to start feeling well, and I really, really want you to, guys, channels like mine should not exist because we should be able to deal with this. We should be able to be here and now and not be focused on what an external event did. We should be focused on, okay, how do I respond to this? How do I move on from this? How do I function how do i stay still and focused and stoic and in a sea of storms and 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 shit basically that's what we should be focused on so it's not the external events that you should be focused on it should be your internal reality it should be you finding peace with inside your own soul that's what it should be not with external validations like social media because here's the thing the other thing with social media it gives you a dopamine hit every time you get a like or you get a comment or someone says hey that's a great picture or something like that you get a dopamine hit then that increases your base level so let's say your base level starts off at five percent okay and you get five percent dopamine and you, you feel good but now you now your base level is going up to ten percent so five percent doesn't work anymore so now you need to get more sources of dopamine from social media so that means you have to go on social media more and you have to get more clicks and more likes now your base level is at 50 percent. so we're at five percent used to more than be more than sufficient to get you a, a nice dopamine hit now you are taking so much more just to get the same effect it's like any other drug and human beings are scarily good at normalizing almost anything so if you want to feel better If you want to start moving on and if you have ambitions of getting your ex back, which shouldn't be your primary goal, your primary goal should be to get you back. But this will offer you the best possibility, opportunity, environment, whatever you want to call it, because you are too busy working on yourself. You are too busy on your purpose. You are too busy focused on your success. And that's where it should be.
Personal pain is an advantage if you let it be and you harness it. There is no happiness without sadness. There is no relief without pain because you have to experience the polar opposite to know what the good thing feels like. You have to experience sadness to know what happiness feels like. You have to experience pain to know what it feels like not to be in pain. And here's the thing, guys, that pain is the best teacher. It's the best mentor if you harness it correctly, if you allow it to point you in directions or be open to possibilities you never thought possible before. Because every bad breakup I've had or every bit of pain I've gone through, relief came. But only after that, I accepted my situation and did the work. And so I think Stalking social media, stalking your ex's social media is a lack of acceptance of your situation. And if you just accept your situation, no matter what it is, as painful as that is, I promise you, you'll wake up tomorrow feeling a little bit better and and just knowing that you've got to get on with it. Okay? So, no one's got a gun to your head. But if somebody did, if if I was to come up to you and say, hey, I'm going to give you two weeks to get off of social media or you and your family are going to die or whatever I'm not going to say anything bad because I might get demonetized on YouTube here but you know what I mean if someone's got a gun to your head and your family you will find a way you will very very quickly find a way to make social media vanish you will find the will to do it It's just because there's no consequences in your life and that's what it is and that means you're too comfortable. And I know I'm being hard here, I know that. I've gone through this myself, I'm only passing on what I've learned. I can't make you do anything. All I can do is to say, hey, this is my experience, this is how I dealt with it and I'm here to listen when you're ready to be receptive to the advice. Maybe right now you're not receptive to it. Maybe right now this is the last apron string that you have to your ex and you're clinging on to it for dear life. But guys, the sad truth is you lost them the day they call time on your relationship. They're gone. Okay? And yes, okay, they may come back. They may come back. I don't know. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But isn't it best to prepare for the worst? Because it's just like anything. You know, like uh, any sportsman, let's take boxers for example, they put their bodies through torturous training to prepare for war, to prepare for out and out war. And they may win in 30 seconds, they may win in, in, in round one, but they have to go in prepared for 12 viciously hard rounds of getting hurt and getting you know bashed up. They have to be prepared for that. There is a quote from G. Michael Hopp, I believe. I've I've probably got that name wrong. But I'm going to modify it slightly. Hard times create strong people. Strong people create good times. Good times create weak people. And weak people create hard times. So, this follows on with another saying that I like. I would rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. So I would rather be prepared for hard times than be unprepared for when those hard times actually arrive. So my friends, by not going on social media, you are toughening yourself up. You are preparing for hard times because while you're stuck on social media, you're literally doing nothing. You are stuck on day one of the breakup. You are not going anywhere. You need to start preparing yourself for life without your ex and a life with someone even better than your ex because saying no to your ex, saying no to the person that dumped you, saying no to the person who doesn't want to invest in you anymore means you can say yes to other opportunities, means you can say yes to someone even better than your ex that may become your forever person, that may be become your husband, wife, or parent to your children. That's what you're doing by coming off of social media. That's what you're doing. You are investing in you, you are investing in the future, and you are investing in preparing yourself for future hard times and future good times. And that's why we, we needed to have a talk today. 
because this is getting out of hand. Too many people are hooked up on social media and guys, it must stop. Okay, it must stop. I try to give everybody this advice. People always ask me, Nick, how do I get off my over my breakup? How do I get over my heartache? Stay off of fucking social media, especially when it comes to your ex. That's the number one tip I would give anybody. Okay. I hope this has been helpful. I know this has probably been a tough listen. And if you've got this far, kudos, because it probably means that you, you want to get better. So start today, guys. If you if you find it impossible when you're bored, switch your phone off, put it in a different room, go for a walk, do some push-ups, start writing a book, start working on a new project, play a computer game, watch a film, go to the library, call a friend, I don't care. There's a billion things you can be doing rather than being on social media. But it will take a little bit of discipline. But you can do it. I know you can, because I've done it. Millions of other people have done it, and people that I've coached have done it. And they turned out great. They got better, they got well, some of them, their exes did come back and my client said, no, I'm good, thank you, but no thanks. You don't meet my minimum requirements anymore and they moved on to better people and they are far, far happier. I will see you on the other side.